I am Dr. Jangresh Khan. I welcome you to the lecture of uh, the economics of environment and natural resources. Dear students, we will discuss uh, today the economic theory of pol pollution control. Starting the lecture, economic theory of pollution control, uh, we will discuss in this lecture the management of environmental quality by looking directly at the nature of waste disposal costs. In this lecture we will discuss uh, the uh, waste disposal cost, uh, whether uh, it is uh, the cleaning cost or it is the environmental damage cost. We will discuss all kinds of uh, the cost in order to find out the optimum level of the pollution. In this lecture we will discuss uh, the, uh, determine the volume of waste consistent with socially optimal level of environmental quality, the optimal level of pollution. Uh, first of all, let's, uh, let's, let's discuss the minimization of waste uh, disposal cost. We know that pollution is uh, unavoidable if there is uh, economic activity. We discussed uh, in the uh, previous class that uh, the pollution is the result of uh, the economic activity. If you want to continue the economic uh, activity, you will have to bear the pollution because the economic activity uh, results in the waste disposal and this waste is generates the pollution in form of the air pollution, water pollution and the uh, uh, any, other, any other form of the pollution. So the natural environment has a limited capacity. We know that natural environment has a limited capacity to degrade waste although for persistent pollutants such as DDT, mercury and radioactive waste and so on the symbiotic capacity of the environment may be if not zero quite insignificant. We know that uh, the environment has uh, the assimilative capacity but up to an extent as we discussed that it has uh, the, 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 the land has a limited capacity to absorb the pollutants but some of the pollutants are uh, very difficult to decompose uh, and uh, it takes uh, uh, too much uh, much time to decompose like the DDT, mercury and radioactive waste. The economic consideration of uh, the waste uh, in the form of pollution becomes relevant when the amount of waste disposed exceeds the assimilative capacity of the environment. When this critical threshold is exceeded, the trade-off between environmental quality and pollu pollution becomes apparent. Further pollution beyond this would result uh, would occur only at the cost of reduced environmental quality. Means that the as we discussed, uh, the land has uh, uh, some limited capacity to uh, accommodate uh, the uh, waste. But if an economic activity uh, continues beyond this limit, this means that you are producing at the cost of uh, reduced environmental quality. In other words pollution occurs at a cost. The waste disposal costs originate from two distinct sources. The first is pollution control cost, the cost that arises from society's cleanup effort to control pollution using some type of technology. The second element is the pollution damage cost, which results in from damage caused by untreated waste discharge into the environment. Dear students, as we discussed earlier that the, there are two types of the pollutants. Some pollutants are, can be decomposed, they are absorbed by the land, while others are non-degradable. So we have two types of the cost. One is the pollution control cost. That is the cost which is used for cleaning the society, cleaning the land, cleaning the environment. While the other is in case 
you the land is unable the society environment is unable to absorb to degrade that waste then this waste go, will go untreated and it will result in some damage to the environment this means that uh, the total disposal waste disposal cost is equal to total pollution cost plus total pollution damage cost the economic problem of interest is to minimize the total disposal cost with the full recognition of the uh, implied trade off between its two components control and damage cost means that the problem is that we are interested in minimizing the uh, total disposal cost but we have to take into account the trade off between the con pollution control and damage cost this is because from an economic point of view a dollar's worth of investment on pollution control technology will make sense if and only if society is expected to be compensated by benefit to be realized from the avoidance of environmental damage that are worth more than a dollar means that a direct investment in pollution control should result in the benefits to the society uh, more than a dollar a good understanding of this economic logic requires first of all a clear and intact understanding of the nature of these two types of the waste disposal cost to which we now turn means that uh, here two types of the costs are involved total pollution control cost and total damage cost so in order to understand the concept concept of the total waste disposal we will have to recognize these total pollution cost the total pollution control cost and total pollution damage cost so let us first discuss the pollution control or uh, abatement cost and their certain features dear student the pollution control cost represent direct monetary expenditures by society for the purpose of procuring resources to improve environmental quality or to control pollution these are the car these are the investments which the society make on control of pollution or on improvement of the environment expenditures on sewage uh, sewage treatment plant, uh, facilities smoke stacks soundproof walls uh, catalytic uh, converters on passenger cars are just a few example of pollution control costs these expenditures may be incurred exclusively by private individuals such as on sound proof walls by residents living in a close proximity to airport because in the you know that near airport there are very 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 uh, unpleasant sounds of uh, the uh, the planes uh, taking off and landing uh, on that airport so it creates a, a noise pollution for the residents uh, living near the uh um, airport so what those people do that they uh, they they they, uh, they 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 make some proof walls and there is uh, to uh, some expenditure on that cost uh, this is a part of the pollution control cost and construct uh, these are made by the individuals and then a type of the investment is made by uh, by, by by the uh, pro local or federal government agencies when they, uh, they they start and run programs for the sewage treatment facilities in this case the expenditures are shared by two government bodies this means that the bureaus of uh, uh, expenditures on pollution control may be individual or the federal or local government In general, we would expect the marginal pollution control cost to increase with increased environmental quality or cleanup activities. It is expected that if we control more, uh, 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 if we we control pollution to a greater extent, our means we and uh, we 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 boost up the cleanup cleanup activities. are we uh, we in, in, uh, we are able to in, uh, get incre increased environmental quality this means that the pollution control cost will increase 
This is because you can maintain higher levels of environmental quality require investment technology that are increasingly costly. Such actions which control, improve the quality of environment are the clean up uh, activities. These require some uh, investment in the technology which will increase the marginal pollution control cost. For example, at a certain level of water quality could be achieved through a primary sewage treatment facility. Such facility is designed to screen out the solid and visible material waste, but nothing more. If higher water quality is desired, an additional expenditure on secondary or tertiary treatment may be required. Such additional treatments would require implementation of new, new and costly technologies designed to apply either chemical or biological treatment to the water. Graphically, the marginal control cost can be shown in this figure. On the y-axis, we have the cost. On the x-axis, we have the quantity of waste omitted. As we move from 0 to the right, right world toward the 20, this means increase in the emitted waste means lower quality of environment. As we move above from 0 to upward, this means increase in the minor pollution control cost. So the this this uh, curve is downward sloping MCC minor con uh, pollution control uh, costs uh, is sloping downward from left to right. This means that there exists a inverse relationship between environmental quality and uh, the minor pollution control cost. If you uh, are in, interested uh, uh, the, in fifteen. Uh, uh, the quantity of waste emission at 15, level 15, unit 15, the cost is 50. But if you move toward the origin, means that uh, reduction in the quantity of the waste or improvement in the quality of the air environment, the better quality environment at this point will cost higher 200 dollars. So this means that there is inverse relationship between the uh, better quality of the environment and uh, the, uh, the 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 pollution the pollution control cost. The pollution control implies the movement toward the origin from benchmark of twenty units. Here we see twenty not faced. As we move toward the origin, the, uh, the, the, the environment is improving. If we observe that the minor control cost increases with success in increasing the pollution cleanup, it costs a lot more to clean up the last unit of uh, the pollution than the first. At this stage, it is important to specify certain important technological factors that determine the position of a minor pollution control cost curves. The major pollution cost curve are constructed by holding constant R factors is technology of pollution control, the possibility of input switching, residential recycling, residual recycling, and production technology. A change in any one of the predetermined factors will cause a shift in entire minor pollution control cost curve. Since pollution control costs are explicit or out of pocket expenditure, it is assumed that no apparent market distortion, distortion occurs as a result of the third party effect externality. In other words, for pollution control costs, there will be no difference between private and social costs, means no externality. However, this is not to suggest that market dist uh, distortion is the assessment of pollution cost, uh, cost cont control costs cannot exist as a result of either market imperfection or government intervention in the form of subsidies and taxes. The pollution control cost accounts for only one side of the total social cost of pollution. Let us now turn to our detailed examination of the second component of the total pollution disposal cost, namely pollution damage cost. This was a detailed review of the pollution control cost. Now let us discuss the second type of the cost, pollution damage cost. We know that the volume of uh, the waste discharge exceeds the similar capacity of environment 
and is left untreated, it will contribute to deterioration of environment. Means that we know that uh, the uh, the environment has uh, a limited capacity to absorb, to decompose the pollutants. If the waste generation exceeds this, this will result in degradation of the environment. The total monetary value of all various damages resulting from discharge of untreated waste into the environment is referred to as pollution damage cost. Means it is the cost of, caused by those pollutants which were uh, produced by exceeding the limited uh, the, the, the uh, limited capacity. If the the phase generation exceeds that limited capacity, this means that some of the pollutants will be left untreated. The un these untreated uh, pollutants will uh, this will definitely affect the environment, damage the environment. So, the pollution damage cause is the monetary value of such type of damages. Sub-damage environmental quality may be shown in a variety of ways, largely depending on amount and nature of the untreated waste. Untreated waste. For example, when a biodegradable pollutant such as sewage, uh, phosphate containing uh, detergents and feedlot waste are uh, emitted into a lake, they can lead to development of a process known as uh, eutroph uh, euro uh, eutrophication. Over time, it will occur a substantial portion of the lake with green organic matter, primarily algae and weeds. An immediate effect is reduction in the scenic appeal of the lake. On one side, it will uh, the, the scenic beauty will be affected, while on another side, it will affect the aquatic organisms like fish and the other animals uh, which live in this water. Thus, if the biodegradable pollutants were discharged into a lake and left untreated. The damage to the environmental quality in form of reduced scenic attraction and decreased population of certain aquatic organisms such as fish. The monetary value of these adverse environmental effects is known as the pollution damage cost. The identification and estimation of pollution damage costs are more complicated in case of persistent pollutants means that the cause which we discussed uh, in this uh, slide uh, which uh, will affect the fish, the aquatic animals, the scenic beauty, then apart from it the, uh, the, the estimation of damage cause is com complicated when there are pollutants like the toxic metals such as lead and mercury radioactive waste and inorganic compounds such as pesticide and waste products produced by petrochemical industry which are uh, and these waste are thrown in uh, uh, on the land untreated. What particularly significant about these types of pollutant is not the mere fact that they are patently dangerous to the living organisms and the ecosystem as a whole but that because their very slow decomposition progress key tend to persist in environment for a very long time. Means that uh, this is not the issue that uh, they are damaging the li lives of the organisms, but and they are damaging the, the ecosystem. What the problem is that they will take a longer time to decompose in general. Then the pollution damage costs are identifiable in terms of the losses of our damage to plants and animals and their habitats. Uh, aesthetic. Um, uh, impairments, a rapid deterioration of the physical infrastructures and assets and various harmful effects on the human health and mortality. Dear student, the, message, uh, the, the damage identified in a physical term needs to be expressed in monetary terms as much as possible. Estimation of uh, the damage cost is a difficult task and requires a good deal of imagination and creative approach. Furthermore, other factors being equal, the more persistent the pollutants, the harder the task of evaluating damage costs. Means the 
damage caused of this like the DDT, the plastic and these uh, some, uh, toxic metals is very difficult to calculate. But because uh, uh, besides uh, the such type of the if difficult reproduction damage cause uh, damage does occur. More specifically, the, demo, the damage cause curve measures the social cost of damage to the environment in monetary terms resulting from an additional unit of waste emission. The basic assumption of the construction of this curve is that damage cause is an increasing function of pollution emissions. In other words, the damage caused by unit of pollution increases progressively as the amount of pollution emitted increases. Such factors affect the position of marginal pollution cause damage cause curve. And these include in the, uh, people's preferences for environmental quality, change in population, discovery of new treatment of damage caused by environmental pollution, such as medical breakthrough in the treatment of a certain cancer, or a change in the uh, natural symmetric capacity of the environment. We can see uh, this in this picture. We see on the left uh, y axis uh, the cost of the axis, the quantity of the waste uh, emitted, and here we see that uh, the damage cost increase with increase in the waste emitted as discussed in this slide. When uh, 10 units of the waste is uh, generated, the damage cost is 125. While when the, the uh, with this uh, quantity of waste emitted increases to 15 units, we see that uh, the damage cost uh, increases to 500 US dollars. This shows the direct relationship between the waste emitted and the uh, minor pollution damage cost. After discussing the uh, minor pollution uh, damage cost, let us move toward the concept of the optimum level of pollution. The management of environmental quality is easily understood if the problem is used as the minimization of the total disposal cost. We know that the total cost is composed of two types of the cost, the pollution control cost and pollution damage cost. Now, a question arises, what exactly is the mean by optimal level of pollution and how is it associated with the minimization of the total disposal cost? We see in this figure. The MDC is uh, the marginal damage cost. The MCC is the marginal uh, pollution control cost. The optimal, uh, uh, socially optimal level of waste discharge is WK. We see that at point S, the marginal damage cost and the marginal uh, uh, pollution control cost, they intersect each other at E. So WK this one is actually the socially optimal uh, waste emission. Any deviation from this uh, level of pollution is either direction, either direction would not be cost effective. For example, we move toward the WI. At this point, uh, we see, if we move toward this, the MDC is greater than, here we see that this is the MDC, this is the MDC and this is the MCC. So this MDC is uh, greater than the MCC. Look at this amount, this and this. Thus there is nothing to be gained by taking action to clean uh, a waste a woman toward the WK. Similar argument can be made for the case WJ, which is to the left of, if you move here. What is here? Here we see the minor pollution control cost is greater than the minor damage cost. The minor damage cost is lower, minor pollution control cost is higher. The graph shows that if pollution control cost is not undertaken, measures uh, are not undertaken, the total waste of discharge will be W static. Means if no actions are uh, taken, then the waste disposal is W static. At this level, the discharge of total uh, control cost, uh, cost is represented by 
wsteric s case so the total cost is a w steric this one s w k and uh, this is the uh, total uh, total uh, pollution control cost and the damage cost is uh, be below this this one o s w k o s w k the total cost is o s w which is the summation of o s w k and s w k w steric at this level a total control, uh, control cost by w steric s w k w steric s w k this s and uh, the damage cost is as discussed o s w k this area this area this is the uh, damage cost and this one is the control cost the total cost becomes o s w which is the summation of this cost and this cost so o s w steric is the total cost which is the summation of the damage cost s w uh, s w k o and s w k w steric for this purpose the level of waste emission is increased from w k to w i suppose we are here for the at uh, i the uh, the waste uh, is i i discuss this at the next slide is the total damage cost for this is a uh, uh, incremental emission from wk to wi is uh, indicated by wk smw1 wk sw1 sw1 w wk sw1 the area under the fcc curve the net result of increasing the level of s vision from wk to w1 is an increase in the total disposal cost smn if we here total cost becomes smn this in, this is increase in the total cost so a similar treatment argument can be made showing that lowering the level of the waste emission from wk to wj wj would result in an increase in the total cost by slr if this much is produced waste is minimized then rls or slr this will be additional cost incremental cost thus the pollution level it uh, wk is peri to optimal this is optimal level because if there we move either on this side or this side we see increase in the total cost in other words the optimal level of pollution emission is attained when the marginal damage cost is equal to the marginal co control cost dear student the optimal level of pollution is achieved here at point s when wk is omitted west because here the minor control or pollution control cost and minor damage cost are equal so this is optimum pollution level and hence the total disposal cost is minimized when the condition is met dear student now let us discuss uh, changes in the preferences of and technology and their effects on the Uh, pollution uh, optimal level of pollution if uh, so far we had uh, kept the t constant means technology and other preferences constant if these we uh, uh, make variation in these uh, it is expected that it will bring about a change in this uh, optimal level of pollution so we see the figure 6 a this one we are talking about this one let us assume that uh, the mdc not uh, and fcc not represent the initial marginal uh, damage and control cost and uh, given this the optimal level of pollution is wk suppose this mcc not is the marginal control cost initial 
MDC naught is the initial uh, pollution damage cost. WOK, the intersection point, is uh, the optimal level of pollution. Suppose now, due to the environmental awareness campaign, people demand for higher environmental quality. The people are aware now and they demand higher environmental quality. Of this would be shift the MDC curve to the left. As the people are uh, interested in uh, better quality, the higher quality of the environment, so definitely it will shift uh, uh, the curve leftward where we see less waste. Less waste means better environmental quality. But what it will result in? In figure A, uh, the MDC curve shows that people are willing to pay to avoid the damage. In figure A, this is shown by uh, so shown by MDC not to MDC one here. The people are willing to pay for it, so this curve moves this this word. Other factors being held constant, this change in the marginal climate cause will alter the position of the optimal level of pollution WOK to WOJ. This will be the new level of pollution. It means other things being equal, a preference for a higher level of environmental quality would lead to lower the tolerance for pollution. However, it is important to note that higher environmental quality is realized at some cost, the total cost is higher at the equilibrium level we see here. At this new level, we see this OVW static. This is the new cost. ORW static, this was the older cost. This means that uh, with the M more clean environment, better quality environment, the total cost of the pollution control increases. A similar approach could be used to analyze the effect of technology on the level of pollution and so that society is willing to tolerate at a point in time. To show this, suppose that there is technological breakthrough in control or treatment of specific type of waste. Suppose this implies a cost saving in waste treatment, the minor control cost curve shift downward to the left and this can be seen in figure 2b, 6b in this we see. That the people are interested in some technology and uh, the new technology is being used, there is technological breakthrough uh, uh, which will cure the environment in a better way with least cost, this will curve or shift the curve leftward. And we see a new equilibrium position uh, T, where we see the waste generation is reduced to W J. With this, we see a reduction in total cost because the old cost was O S W static. O S W static. The new cost is OTW static. OTW static. And we know that uh, this lies, the point T lies uh, below the S. Uh, and this area, OTW static, is uh, below the area OSW static, which means that with technological breakthrough, the total cost decreases. Uh, we see here that uh, the SCB a shift in one of cost to FCC, not to MCC. As you know, change in the two factors, another factor, this shift will have effect of reducing the level of pollution from initial WOK to WOJ. The pollution level will uh, be lower, means better quality, or instead of OWO uh, static, we will have OWJ. This means improvement in the waste treatment technology would allow society to reduce its level of pollution or improve its environmental quality. Moreover, the improvement would be accomplished without an additional increase in the total disposal cost. As seen in figure 6b, when the level of pollution is WK, 
the total disposal uh, cost is OSW, this OSW. However, with the new pollution uh, level of pollution WJ, the total waste dis uh, uh, total disposal cost is reduced to OTW. This cost OSW static is reduced to OTW. In this particular case, there is not only a decline in pollution but also a reduction in waste disposal cost. Here, not only the uh, pollution reduced, we have better quality but also the cost reduced due to the technological breakthrough. This is more like you can have the cake and eat it too. Indeed, it is a good example of miracle of technology. Technology may not uh, also affect the level of pollution that society would like to have in some other ways to see this. Let us assume that there is technological breakthrough in the treatment of cancer caused by exposure to certain pollutant. Other things be equal, be equal obvious effect of this is to shift the minor damage caused downward and to the right. As uh, some treatment is uh, introduced, uh, so the damage cost is reduced to uh, from C0 to uh, the MC1 shift. The new optimal pollution WA will exceed the level of pollution. This this level is higher than this WJ. Hence, in this case, uh, where improvement in technology would lead to an increase rather than decrease in the level of pollution and deterioration of the environmental quality. However, even under this condition, improvement in technology would lead to reduction in total waste disposal cost. This can easily be seen in Figure 26C, where the where the new cost, the old cost was OFW static and the new cost is OGW static. Instead of OW static, we have OGW static, which is a lower cost. The two cases show a technological improvement that causes a shift in either MCC or MDC can lead to a reduction in total disposal, total disposal cost. However, the factor of pollution is indifferent in both cases. In the first two cases, we see that the pollution decreased, or in the third case, we saw an increase in the pollution. Now, let us uh, see the conclusive subtopic, the optimal level of pollution uh, from ecological point of view. Pollution cleanup is better than the doing nothing, but pollution Prevention is best way to work more gently on the earth. Miller 1993, a good quotation. Suppose an extreme case where no pollution is permitted such as GDT. If zero level of pollution is deemed socially optimal, then as shown in the figure, every level of pollution MDC is greater than the MCC and the ban on substance generating such waste is economically justified. This is the MCC and this is the MDC. Such an instant, no inconsistency exists between the economic and ecological resolution of the pollution. However, there are several reasons why the economic optimum may not ec ecologically desirable. This is should not be exposed during the specific cases. We take the first case, we are basing the optimum solely uh, on human preferences is not appropriate, especially when it is applied to the environment. The second case implies that the standard economic approach to pollution control may put more emphasis on pollution cleanup than the pollution prevention. The third uses the result of the three specific empir uh, empirical studies to illustrate the situations uh, in the global ca case forming where the optimum pollution does not adequately safeguard the interest of future generation and the Earth's ecosystem as a whole. This is a figure where MCC is the major uh, pollution control cause and MDC is the uh, um, uh, minor disposal, uh, um, uh, minor damage cost. The key issue here is minor damage cost is everywhere above the minor, here the minor damage cost is everywhere above the minor uh, control, pollution control cost. 
Hence, first division will be reduced to zero. We take the first case. Mostly in estimating the damage function, only human preferences are considered. What is troubling is the extent to which a purely uh, anthropocentric based on preference uh, order, ordering adequate amount for the future human life and the integrity of the natural ecosystems. Without such an insurance, a divergence between economically and ecologically uh, optimum pollution may be inevitable. In this respect, uh, the bias is expected to be more uh, pollution, to have more pollution, since the economic estimate of damage function is likely to understate the welfare of the future generations and the diversity and resilience of the natural ecosystems. We take the second case, where the economic criteria for optimal level of pollution is developed with implicit assumption of predetermined level of waste, a benchmark as we see in the, all the examples of WSTARIC. For example, in each case is there the deterioration of the optimal of pollution was demonstrated at WSTARIC was as defined as the benchmark, the maximum level of a particular waste under consideration for cleanup. The optimum popula- pollution is calculated without any consideration of what it would be worth to society if a reduction in the benchmark pollution were to take place. Uh, in all our efforts, we were interested in reducing the pollution from W static to below the W static. We were interested in moving toward the origin in all cases, this case, in all these cases, we were interested uh, to move from, toward the origin. Given this standard economic approach to pollution control is most likely to stress pollution cleanup rather than pollution prevention. A study of pollution prevention emphasizes waste reduction at source or reducing the amount of waste before it enters to the waste system. This is the best strategy. To the extent uh, uh, that this is uh, ignored or under uh, emphasized, the economic growth to pollution control may have a substantial ecological outcome. In the case 3, the estimates of pollution control costs may relatively easy to obtain, but it is extremely difficult to evaluate all aspects of the damage cause. It is easy to say to calculate the dam- pollution damage cause, but it is very difficult to, to calculate the damage cause. This is especially true when the pollution con- under the consideration involves irreversible irre- ecological change and the risk of major adverse surprises over a long time. This Another report, second report of the United Nations 1995, the International Panel on Intergovern- uh, Sponsored Intergovernmental, the second report 1995 of the United Nations Sponsored Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, Human Activities, uh, raised global mean temperature one half of the Celsius since the uh, since of the industry period in Industrial Revolution of, of 1870 in the United States. It is projected that it will be up in the range of 1 to 3.5 degrees Celsius over the next century if the concentration of greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, methane, chlorofluorocarbons and nitrous oxide are not controlled. And they are not controlled. It is expected that in the coming century, uh, the temperature will raise from 1 to 3.5 degrees Celsius. It will damage to the world agriculture and forestry and arise in the sea level and to affect the adjustment capacities of the main species in the three economic studies uh, of the global warming that follow a vision of. Uh, in all these three studies, uh, of the, the of the global warming that follow the emission of the greenhouse gases is viewed as a global externality. In all these studies, they uh, whether Nordos 1992, the Klein 1992, and uh, the Nordos 1991, in all these studies, the emission of the greenhouse gases is viewed as a global externality. The ecological policy favors a much higher emission control rate than the policy based on the economic inef- efficiency, the optimal path. This is how Nord described the result in his own words. 
Immediate control rate differ greatly among the alternative policies. In the optimal path, the rate emission reduction is approximately 10% of the GHG emissions in the near future, rising the, to 15% late in the next century, whereas climate civilization requires vertical, virtually complete elimination of GHG emissions. Student, these are the references. The major book is, uh, again, the Hussein, uh, Ahmad Hussain, 2004, and the other arts uh, is the supporting material. Thank you very much.